Welcome to this training session on how to terminate a Category 6 shielded cable with a standard RJ45 connector. We'll be showing you how to terminate the connector with full 360 degree shielding. This is a best practices recommendation and you can modify this as you need to terminate your cable. A lot of these connectors will fail in the field over time. Some statistics actually point to 1 in 3 failing. So you want to make sure you do terminate this correctly and right to make it last and make sure you're not a statistic. So your first step before you start prepping your cable is slide up a piece of shrink tubing over the cable. We're using 3 to 1 shrink tubing because it gives a better strain relief on the cable and the connector. So I'm going to slide this up over the cable first and that'll be for sliding up and shrinking in place after we're done terminating the connector. Measure and mark your jacket approximately 1 inch. It can be more than one inch. One inch is the minimum you'd need to actually strip the cable. My personal preference is about one and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark one and a half inches on my jacket. And you can use a strip tool like the cigar cutter or you can use a hobby knife like the X-Acto knife here. You can use a box knife, but you wanna score the jacket around the cable. Do it carefully. You don't wanna to go too deep. You don't wanna cut your conductors. If you flex the jacket, you'll see the jacket breaks part and you can pull this off. Sometimes the shield will come off with your slug, sometimes it won't. If it does not come off, you want to go ahead and peel that shield off. One issue with the shield on these cables is it is very heavy and this can slice your fingers. You want to be careful. You want to score the shield down by the jacket. You can take a pair of diagonal cutters and nip the shield down here. In my case, this one's already scored. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. I can discard the shield. Next step is your drain wire. You have your drain wire, you want to lay that back out of the way. You do not want to cut off the drain wire. Most Category 6 shielded cables are going to have a secondary binder underneath the jacket made of polyester. It's usually a clear tape. You want to remove this. You want to go ahead and score the clear tape right down by the edge, making sure not to damage your conductors. Go ahead and rotate that off and you can discard that. You want to go ahead and remove that center separator which is made out of polyethylene or if in case of plenum it's going to be made out of a floral polymer. You pull your pairs out, out of the way and you'll see this has flutes on it. You want to go ahead and use your diagonal cutters and kind of cut in at an angle to remove this separator here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut four times on each one of these uh, flutes and make sure you don't cut your actual conductors. Once you get them all trimmed, you can just peel and break this off. So now my separator is out of the way and it's angled so I can get a better fit on my connector. For the best practices application, what you want to do is secure your drain wire with copper tape. And you don't want to use just any copper tape. You want to use a copper tape that has a conductive adhesive. Liberty part number RJ45-STP-L6 provides you with everything you need for this termination. So I'm going to go ahead and secure the drain wire with copper tape. So I'll go ahead and peel off my copper tape. I want to be careful not to cut my fingers. Copper tape can cut also. All right, I want to lay this copper tape over the drain wire and flush with the end of the jacket. I don't want to go over the end of the jacket because that copper tape edge can be sharp and can cut into the insulation of the conductors. I want to go ahead and just line it up and just rotate it around and give it a good coverage. And now I can trim off my excess drain wire. You might have a solid drain wire or a stranded drain wire. It's not going to matter here. You want to go ahead and uh, trim off your excess past the copper tape. Next, we're going to untwist our pairs. Under the 568 standard, no more than one half of an inch can be untwisted to the connector's contact points. And you want to make sure you untwist these. Keep your tip and ring conductors. The white is the tip conductor and the colored is your ring. You want to keep them together. Once you've untwisted these, we need to lay these out as smooth as possible. And that's where I kind of curve my fingers and pull it a few times to get the convolutions out. This probably is the longest part of the entire termination thing is to make sure that these conductors are nice and straight. Right. Once you have these conductors straightened out, the next step is going to put them in the proper color code. We're going to use 568B for our color code. 568A is generally used in residential type applications or home installations. And the reason for this is the 568A color code is forward or backwards compatible to the USOC two phone lines. 
560AB is only backwards compatible to a single phone line. So 560AB is going to be used primarily in businesses and in commercial type applications. Now I stripped my cable a little longer than uh, one inch. So I've got one and a half inches and this is kind of the reason I do this. It gives me a little bit of slop to work with. The extra conductors I don't need, the extra lengths of the conductors I don't need to get these ready to stage into the load bar of the connector. The Category 6 connector is two pieces. You have the actual connector body, which is the large aluminum shielded connector itself. And then inside there, you have a load bar, a little black bar with the category six that has pre-cut holes for holding the wires. The insulation on a shielded cable is gonna be thicker than an unshielded cable, and it's gonna take up more space. So these won't lie side by side very well to put into a connector. So this load bar actually holds them in the proper position and holds them together for you. It makes it easier to insert into the connector. The two-piece RJ45 connector will always outperform a one-piece RJ45 connector. So if you're looking for performance, the two-piece is better. It has a end that's open and an end that's a flat surface with the holes in it. The open end wants to go over the wires first. It helps you to feed them in. It does take a little bit of practice to do this. You want to make sure your wires get lined up. One thing you also want to do is hold lateral pressure on the load bar from side to side here on the long sides. These load bars can break and if you break the load bar then you have just lost a connector. We include five extra load bars for every 25 connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and seat my load bar all the way up to at least getting close to two millimeters to the edge of the jacket. It's got to be pretty tight but you want to get it as close to that jacket as possible. And then you want to validate your color code, make sure nothing moved on you. Make sure your wires are relatively uh, straight still because you don't want them curving over each other when you insert them into the connector. The next step is to trim the conductors. So from the fully seated load bar, I want to measure 3 tenths of an inch and trim off my conductors approximately 3 tenths of an inch. I'm holding my finger over the exposed conductor so they don't fly off and hit anybody. You want to make this nice and straight. You don't want to have any angle to it. Your load bar does move a little bit here and there as you're doing this, just want to pre-position that back in. So now I'm ready to insert this into the actual connector itself. I'm going to prepare the connector by bending the shield contact or strain relief 90 degrees from the connector body. One thing about these RJ45 connectors that have the external clamp is they have more opening space for cable to go into. So they're going to be much better for large cable. This particular connector can actually fit cables up to three tenths of an inch in diameter. So it can fit a very large cable in here. Before I insert my wires into my connector, I have to do one last step. The junction where the cable jacket's cut off is very large in diameter. In order to fit this into the connector, I need to crush it down. I have a pair of needle nose pliers here. I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this down. Just make it nice and oval. With my color code pin one going to pin one of the connector, which usually means you hold the connector upside down, make sure that the slides in. If it doesn't slide in, I might have to ovalize that section again a little bit better. Seat it firmly. And the way you tell whether your connector is seated all the way is if you can see copper at the front of the connector. I'm gonna validate mine. I have a little five power jewelers loop here. Validate your color code and whether you have copper showing, which I do. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide the strain relief up and bend it over by finger power. So using a heavy duty crimp tool for category 6 cable, you do not want to use any sort of economy crimp tool when crimping category 6 cable. The Liberty Catmaster tool that we sell is perfect for this application. It's made for category 6 cables already and it will terminate this connector. Make sure it's fully seated. A lot of damage can happen to connectors and tools if you don't seat it all the way. Go ahead and squeeze firmly. Hold for a second to make sure you get full seat and then you can release the tool and remove your connector from the tool. You want to inspect after you crimp to make sure that all your contacts are the same height. Sometimes with these tools, those little finger dies inside can get bent. If they get bent over, they'll fail to see one crimp pin all the time. And that's a way you can tell you need to replace your tool. Once you have your cable strain relief clamp clamped onto the copper tape that gives you a good ground contact, you'll notice it's not very tight. 
This is where that three to one shrink tubing comes into place. You're gonna slide that shrink tubing up over that clamp and over the connector body. It's gonna be a little bit tight because you gotta shrink it down over the cable and stuff. Slide that up to approximately the edge of the metal on the RJ45. So you're gonna have the edge of the metal on the front face and now this is ready to shrink into place. Your next step is to shrink the shrink tubing in place. You do have to be rather careful with this application because heat is very bad for cables. So you want to make sure you're shrinking the shrink tube with as little application of heat as possible. Especially with non-plenum cables where you have polyethylene style insulation, polyethylene will run under heat and shrink back and it will change the electrical characteristics of your cable if you overheat it. So you want to make sure you do this very quickly and efficiently and don't over apply the heat. Your fully terminated and shrunk connector all ready for installation. With a solid 360 degree shield contact all ready for HD base T or shielded ethernet connections.